So before we go into the details of Quicksort, the pseudocode and everything, let's try to get a high level intuition. Let's try to get a high level idea on how Quicksort itself works, right? So it's, this is the intuitive part. Of course, I'll go into details of the code, line by line, we'll go through it. But first, let's get a very, very high level idea to understand how we are trying to achieve or how we are trying to sort the whole thing, right? For this, the best source that I've come across, I mean, this is a source that I have used personally when I was an undergraduate student, right? So this is from MIT OCW. I'll provide you a link to this in the different section. This is MIT's open courseware, a terrific set of videos and lecture notes and assignments from MIT. And this was actually based on a class that Charles Leeserson himself taught in 2005. So if you recall in CLRS, right, you have Carmen Leeserson. It is this guy. It is this Leeserson who has taught the course at MIT in 2005. These are the lecture notes from his lectures. So it's actually from the person who wrote the CLRS, one of the others of the CLRS textbook, right? And this is the best notes or best slides that I've ever seen for Quicksort. Very, very good, very, very well done. So I'll be using these slides wherever required, wherever I think it is better explained in these slides than anywhere else, right? So here is the idea, here is the intuition of Quicksort, right? So I'll go step by step. So Quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm. Remember your merge sort? If you recall your merge sort, what did we do in merge sort? Merge sort is also a divide and conquer approach where we took the large array, we broke the array into two parts, right? We sorted these two arrays and then merged them together, right? To sort this, I would break it up into two smaller arrays, sort them and merge them. This is how we did divide and conquer and merge sort, right? In merge sort, you would break the array into two equal parts, sort the two smaller parts and then merge. That's what we did in merge sort. It's also divide and conquer. Similar to merge sort, but slightly different, okay? The strategy is the same. The strategy is the same. Even in quick sort, even in quick sort, we would use a form of divide and conquer, right? So to, to quick sort an element of size n, uh, to, sorry, to a quick sort an array of size n okay so you're given let's say an array a which has elements one two three up to n right so this is an array of size n how do we s so the idea of so this is a different form of divide and conquer this is not the same divide and conquer as we have in merge sort it's a slightly different form we'll see what is the difference here right so imagine if i'm given an array okay so let me draw it here so imagine if i'm given an array Right? Imagine if I'm given an array like this. What I'll try to do is in, in, in quick sort, I'll take the first element. Let me take the first element here. I'll call this first element as the pivot element. Okay. I'll call this element as the pivot element. So I have one to n, right? I have n elements. Okay. So let's call the pivot element as x. Okay. So a of one is your pivot element is your pivot element and let's say the value that is here the value that is inside this let's say the value that is inside this is x okay now what i'll try to do the way i'll try to do the divide and conquer is i'll try to modify this array okay i'll try to modify or the word here is partition the array remember in merge sort we partition the array into two equal partitions or two equal parts right in quick sort, what I'll try to do is, I'll try to partition this array such that, this is the key part here. I'll try to partition the array such that, this pivot element will be placed here, some location. See, this is your first location and this is your nth location. This could be any location between one to n. But what I want is all the elements on the left side of the pivot element should be less than equal to x all the elements that are on the right side of the pivot element should be greater than x, right? So this is the initial array that I'm given. Initially, I'm given an array A, okay? I'll take the first element of the array as a pivot element. The keywords here are important. This is called the pivot element. And through something called as a partition, okay? What I'm trying to do here is, I will somehow modify this array, okay? We'll see how partition works internally, okay? Somehow I'll try to modify this array such that 
I will place x in a location such that all the elements to the left of x are less than or equal to x. All the elements greater than x are on the right side of x. Okay, that's what this says. Okay, what does this say? I will pick up an element, pivot element x such that I will place the x in its correct location. All the elements less than x are on the left side. All the elements greater than and equal to also. Okay, either of them is okay. All the elements that are greater than equal to x, not necessarily just greater than. Greater than equal to x could be on the right side. Right? So this is how I want to divide my array. Okay, I want to partition my array. So the first step is divide. So given my initial array, okay, let's assume this is my x, this is first element to nth element. In the first step, in the first step, I'll partition the array such that I will get, I'll transform this array in such a way that I have x here, all the elements less than or equal to x are here, all the elements greater than or equal to x are in this region. Now, at the end of this step, right, I know that x is in the correct location. This is obvious, right? x is in the correct location. If you take the final sorted order, all the elements less than or equal to x should be on the left side. All the elements greater than or equal to x should be on the right side. Right? All the elements less than or equal to should be on the left side. So x is in its appropriate position. x is in its correct position in the final sorted array. Now what I'll do here is I will now I have two partitions now. Right? I have divided my problem of size n into two problems. Because I've already placed x in its appropriate location. I have two problems. Now I'll recursively solve this. So for example, let's see what happens here. So let's assume I have an array of size x, uh, size n, let's say size n, and this is my x. After partition, after applying partition, and taking this as the pivot, taking this as the pivot, what do I get? I modify my array in such a way that x is here, all the elements less than or equal to x are in this side, all the elements greater than or equal to x are on the other side, which means x is now in its appropriate location in the sorted array. Now I have two subarrays. This is a subarray. This is a subarray. Now I will take this subarray. Now I'll take this subarray. This subarray. I'll take its first element. Let's call its first element as y. Right now, so this the, the size of the subarray could be anything. Okay. So we'll come to we'll come to more details as we go. So I'll take the first element of this subarray. Okay. Now, similarly, I'll take the first element of this subarray. Let's assume the first element of this subarray is z. Now, I'll apply the partition function on top of it again. I'll apply the partition function. I'll apply the partition function again. And what I'll do here, I'll place y here such that all the elements less than or equal to y here, greater than or equal to y are here. Similarly, I'll apply the partition function here and modify this subarray such that z is in its correct location less than or equal to z greater than or equal to z are here right now what will happen now i'll again have these four sub arrays this sub array now y is in its appropriate location z is also in its appropriate location now i have four sub arrays right this sub array see recursively what am i doing here i'm breaking a problem of size n right into smaller problems right so this is a sub array remember this whole left side is a sub array so I've broken up a problem of sorting into problem of sorting a smaller subarray, problem of sorting the other subarray, right? I have two subarrays, right? That again I have to sort. Only x is in its appropriate position, right? So effectively, what I'm doing here is this. What I'm doing here is I'm doing I'm taking the pivot element, I'm breaking up the array in such a way that all the elements less than or equal to x are in the left side, all the elements greater than or equal to x are on the right side. I'll keep recursively doing it. Right, what am I doing here? I've taken the left sub array. I've recursively breaking it down. I've broken up into four arrays now. Now this sub array is also broken up into two sub arrays. I'll keep going like this in a recursive fashion. Right? Now how do I combine the solutions? In the case of mud sort, in the case of mud sort, I had a big array which I broke into two sub arrays and I had to carefully merge them. In this case, I don't have to merge anything. Merging is trivial because all the elements are here. See, for example, if this is sorted, if this whole thing is sorted, this whole thing is sorted. Now, I know that all these elements are less than or equal to x. I know that all these elements are greater than or equal to x and x is in between. So there is no worry. Just copy everything here, copy everything here and I'm done. 
right? So the whole high level idea of, of quicksort is you take a pivot element, break the array into two subarrays. So remember this subarray and this subarray could be of different sizes. In much sort, they're of the same size, remember, okay? In quick sort, they can be of any size, right? So this X is in between. You break this into two subarrays. You recursively keep solving this. You recursive, you break this again into two subarrays. You break each of them into two subarrays, so on and so forth. And you can trivially combine them, right? So the key aspect of whole of quick sort is how do you implement your partition algorithm? This is the big question. So we said the partition algorithm will place your X in its appropriate location. All the elements less than or equal to X will be on the left side. All the elements greater than or equal to X are on the right side. But how does partition work? The key, the major innovation of quicksort is that the partition function or the partition operation or subroutine is a linear time algorithm, which means it is order of N. So if you want to partition an array of size n, you can apply the partition function and break it like this in order of n. That is the key. We'll see how the partition function works. Okay, but this is this is the summary. This is the high level intuition on how quicksort works. Just to summarize, quicksort takes an array of size n, right? Quicksort takes an array of size n. It applies the partition function. I'll just write the partition function as capital P takes this element using this partition function, which is order of n. It breaks the problem into two sub problems such that all these elements are less than or equal to x. All these elements are greater than or equal to x. And it recursively tries to solve this problem and this problem. So on and so forth. It keeps recursively doing it. That is the high level intuition of quicksort. 